Hi friends, hello and welcome to another video. Today, I want to ask you a quick question. Do you remember that biased and very disrespectful report from BBC's Robin Brandt during the gentle floods a couple of years ago? Let's watch here to refresh your memory. The last few days, hundreds of thousands of people were evacuated from in or around this city. But the most troubling question that remains amidst the stench of dirty water here is how was it that a station on this line came to be overwhelmed by rainwater and passengers left to die on the platform and passengers left to die on the platform and passengers left to die on the platform that is Western media for you guys when they cover natural disasters. Starting from July 29th, the northeast part of China got hit with heavy rains and floods caused by two typhoons. And of course, Western media couldn't resist the opportunity to spin the story to fit their narrative of China bad. And passengers left to die on the platform. Sure, Beijing endured its strongest storm in 140 years. Who cares, right? Do they ever talk about the incredible response from authorities? No, they don't. That's not what they do. 44,000 PLA troops, 29,000 rescue team members, 5,400 emergency vehicles, 880 boats and 200 aircrafts were deployed to the area to save and rescue the people. But does Western media care about that? Not at all. The truth is that thousands of heroic rescuers worked tirelessly, some even died, in order to help and relocate 148,000 people from the area. And thanks to their efforts, the city saw minimal casualties. Everything from medical treatments, pipe repairs, sandbag placement, road repairs, the scale of the operation was astonishing. But the Western media conveniently overlooks all this and focuses on those divisive issues like the dam. Guess what? On top of all this, the government has already allocated 1 billion yuan in compensation for material and crop losses. Insurance companies are estimated to pay about 380 million yuan. The response to this disaster has been extraordinary, my friends. But now let's talk about, well, Lahaina in Hawaii. We are seeing what is considered now the deadliest fire in American history. And there are plenty of questions surrounding its origin. You see... The alarms didn't go off, none of them. Pretty much everybody's saying the same thing, that we had no warning, no uh, evacuation notice, so a lot of people were not prepared. There were no sirens. Hawaii has a very well-developed early warning system. The sirens that most people would have listened to and led to the evacuation weren't sounded in Lahaina. These systems are supposed to be the first line of defense. They direct residents to other sources of information when an emergency occurs, but they failed. And we all remember, right, that false uh, nuke alert in Hawaii a couple of years ago. Missile threat to Hawaii. A missile may impact on land or sea within minutes. This is not a drill. How real it felt for almost an hour to think that a ballistic missile is going to hit. My assistant Linda called me. She was crying. She said we have 10 minutes left. These alarm systems are clearly faulty and they need to be thoroughly investigated. Some people speculate that there may be a scheme to turn this pristine waterfront area into a new state development. And the facts seem to support this, my friends. Fact number one. A part of Maui looks like this now and guess what your president is doing about it? Guess. This man fixed his mouth to ask for more money for Ukraine, bro. Hey, we could get a little bit of money for disaster relief, but we gotta make sure we send another 24 bill to Ukraine. Does your country people not matter, bro? Joe Biden has offered a measly $700 per household to offset the damage. Consider that the average home in Lahaina costs one million. That's a slap in the face to these residents who have lost millions overnight. And now there's also more money being sent to Ukraine. There's money for them, but not for Americans. Fact number two. These residents who were once in a strong position to negotiate if they were to sell their homes and their land are now homeless and destitute. Even those with insurance will not receive funds soon enough. It is the perfect opportunity for state developers and billionaires to swoop in and take advantage. Investors and realtors calling the families who lost their home, offering to buy their land. How dare you do that? To our community right now. So folks, these are the facts. And what we're not, it was the motivation behind the disaster in Lahaina. It is something that needs attention. People cannot let these injustices go unnoticed. They need to talk about them. You know, it's really something to see the stark contrast in the response to natural disasters between China and the good old America.
Let's take a look at the situation in Maui, Hawaii, and why it's a prime example of America's failure in emergency responses. But I was here during the Niki, 1992, when there was a massive, massive, it just blew apart Kauai. But we took shelter. I was in the Marine Corps. I was working for a, a helicopter squadron. And after the hurricane passed, it was all hands on deck. And within hours, we mobilized multiple aircraft, including when and we shipped out. We did sorties every day, 8, 10, 12 sorties a day, every day to Kauai, from Oahu to Kauai. We brought generators. We brought power. We brought buffaloes of water. We bought medicine. We brought doctors. We bought all, all kinds of stuff. And it never stopped for two months. We did not stop. My question is... Where are the helicopters? Where's the military? It's unbelievable to me what is going on. And where is the military? Where are they? Why are they not flying here? Hold on to your hats because this is going to be, this is going to blow your mind, okay? This is fact number three. This is a, a really important one. When you consider the response in China, there are not one, not two, but three military bases in Maui. That's right. There are three of them. And what have they done in response to this devastating fire? Well, if you believe what the locals are saying on social media posts, it seems like they've done everything in their power to prevent access to the area. That's right. You're hearing it correctly. They are keeping help and supplies out. Unbelievable. Now, let's talk about America's track record then when it comes to handling natural disasters and emergencies. We all know FEMA. I'm sure you all remember Hurricane Katrina. They've given them permission to go down and shoot us. George Bush doesn't care about black people. It was a complete disaster. Who can forget uh, President Trump when he visited Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria? Instead of providing real help, he decided to just toss toilet paper rolls at the crowd. That was a classy move by the former president. And let's not forget... <laughs> The first lady's questionable wardrobe choices during that time that Jagata said, I don't care, do you? It's like they were making a mockery of the whole situation. Here's the thing, friends. When you look at China's response to natural disasters, it is a whole different ballgame. They've got emergency response down to a science. Whether it is floods or earthquakes, the Chinese people can rely on their government to step up and handle the situation with precision and efficiency. And that's why you see people thanking them for coming to their help. It is something that all people in America should aspire to. So my heart goes to all those affected by these natural disasters, both here in China and in America. I just wish that Americans had the kind of emergency response that the Chinese people can count on. It's time for America to step up and do better. Thanks for watching and remember to like, comment and share.